Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm just turning it off. We're just having some fun with the um, intro here. So, amen. God bless you. Um, this is Pastor Bishop John W. Sickers, and welcome to our midweek Bible study. Um, just had a few technical dis difficulties trying to get started, but we are here. Amen. Say hey, honey. Hey. Amen, Pastor Lane. She walked away from me, y'all. She went on the other side over there. She didn't want to be close to me. That's not true. Amen. Praise God. She just liked me calling in the middle of the day telling me I love her. Amen. But then she walk away from me. I do like that. <laughs> Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I pray that you had a wonderful day today. Amen. It was kind of weird. This morning it started off cold and then it got warm. Amen. So I was like, wow, what's up with that? Praise God. We had ice and sunshine all in the same day. <laughs> Welcome to your feast in Ohio. Welcome to Cleveland. Amen. But God bless you. Amen. Uh, we're going to be talking tonight again amen, from the subject of mentoring, uh, part two. We didn't really get through the whole thing last week, even the whole part of part one. I, I think I'm just going to go another week and we're going to move on to the um, next lesson, um, um, catching another spirit. It's, it's awesome. Amen. So, but we want to go ahead and get started. You did say hi, baby, right? I did. Thank now, you. Now, um, those who are listening, I'm giving you an opportunity to get your pens, get your paper. Uh, we're going to be going through some of the, the questions. We just want to have the five. We're going to have the one from last week because we didn't get a chance to get through them. So we just did one. So we'll go ahead and do that again this week. Uh, honey, um, let me hear the bell. Make sure that it's sounding okay. Amen. Amen. She's got it. She's got it. So let's bow our heads and then we're going to go ahead and get started. So, so Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace and your mercy you extended towards us. God, we just thank you because you are powerful and great and mighty God. Father, as we go through this lesson, I pray that you will make this lesson applicable to the lives of those who are here listening, oh God. Thank you. Some that may be listening now, maybe later, maybe tomorrow on their job or whenever, Lord God. I pray that you will let it be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, mentoring. Mentoring. Amen. That's the subject. It's part of the spiritual protocol. I, I wanted to say um, also before I got started that um, I'm so thankful for yesterday. We had our meeting. I had to turn the music down a little bit. Our meeting yesterday, um, our staff meeting, the whole staff was there. Amen. And we just had a great time. Went through some um, um, character building um, exercises. And it was just totally awesome. 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 Thank you all for um, making it out. Um, the staff I'm talking to right now. God bless you. I love you. And um, I, I feel stronger be, you know, um, behind it. Amen. It's something when we come together, amen, in unity, according to Psalms 133, amen. So praise God. God bless you all. I pray that you get a chance to come out tonight. But anyway, we're going to go over. I'm going to reiterate some things. I'm going to talk about some things I talked about last week. I'm going to go a little deeper in a couple things. But um, all in all, I believe you're going to be blessed. Amen. Praise God. So we're ready to go, honey? We are ready. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, uh, as we, we talked about um, mentoring, we said that um, during our time of mentoring, we're not just talking about the mentor and the mentee, but also mentoring is another word for discipling. Um, here, we're here at Freedom Empowerment Ministry Center. I, I've told I tell you all the times that we're not, you are not church members. Amen. I'll say that again. You are not church members, amen, but you are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and when he gives us what he gives us in terms of the preach word and instruction, amen, those instructions and the preach word and the prayers, amen, is all part of the process, amen, because as we move in ministry, there must be a process. We have to allow the process to take its full uh, uh, view, amen, upon us. It's got to take its full reign. That's the word I'm looking for. So um, when you jump out of the process too soon, amen, it can be damaging to you in terms of your uh, right relationship with your mentor and mentee, but also with your uh, purpose 
and your plan being fulfilled in your life. Amen. So it's important that we go through the process, watch this, with the right spirit. Amen. With the right spirit. Amen. Because sometimes it's not easy. It's, it's not easy being mentored. Amen. I remember um, one time in, in my beginning stages, I think I was with, I had like seven different mentors. I'll tell you about them at the end of the this lesson, but I remember being with one of my mentors, Apostle. We had just gotten there at the church, Apostle Bunkley, and um, they were praying for someone. And my cousin, one of my cousins from Columbus, came to visit the church. So I'm on the ministry team, of course. But when my cousin came in, I went in the back to greet him, amen, to greet her, amen. So I'm hugging her and saying, hey, how you doing? So good to see you, you know. And Apostle came back there and got me and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm not doing anything. Amen. I was, you know, I didn't have no words to say. He said, get back up there. You need to be praying right now. So I, I didn't hesitate. I didn't get an attitude. I didn't jump, fly or nothing. I went right up there. Amen. And as soon as I put my hand, amen, in with the other leaders, amen, God began to move on that individual. So you never know how important your part is. Amen. And don't think that your part isn't important, especially in leadership. When God calls you into leadership, he calls you for a purpose, amen, and a plan, amen. And he uses the mentor or the leader to help you to be processed or to be developed in that gift that's on the inside of you. Because sometimes when you first come, you may not even know what the gift is. Um, I, I didn't even know what my gifting was, amen. I didn't think that I can flow in the prophetic. I didn't think, amen, that I can have a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, amen. I didn't think that I even could just pray with people. When I first came into ministry, I was just watching what everybody else was doing. And see, sometimes it's like that. But once you begin to understand, and if you connect your your heart with the heart of the visionary of the house, and you your heart is connected with the leader, amen, God can do great things in the midst of your life amen hallelujah so sometimes we don't we don't get it because we won't connect amen i i i have people that are close to me but then there may be people you may not be as close amen however and you can still be connected amen it doesn't matter you don't have to be sitting in front of me all day and all night i don't have to call you every single day amen to be connected amen because the connection that we have is not just a physical and it isn't a physical connection, but it's a spiritual connection. So as mentors and mentees, we're connected by the Spirit. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Elder um, Great House. Amen. Elder. And <laughs> I don't know why I call you that. Evangelist Great House. Amen. My adjutant. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Um, I'm Elder Regina. Amen. Thank you for, for coming on. We had a great time yesterday. Amen. Praise God. I'm looking forward to our next session. Amen. Hallelujah. But um, as we begin to understand, it's not just on the job training, you know, where, well, it is, but it's not just that alone. It's not just, I'm telling you one thing, hands on, because I found out something from me being mentored by my mentors, amen, was some things are taught, but then a lot of things are caught. And I found out also that there's more things that are caught by my mentor than what was taught to me, amen? And it's good to have the teaching, amen? And it's an invaluable um, tool. But I want you to know that it's by the Spirit you can catch some things that you may not have gotten in the teaching. And sometimes even in the teaching, the Holy Spirit will speak something into your heart even that will take you even further Amen. In the understanding and in the revelation knowledge of that which is being taught to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, because Jesus, when he, he taught his disciples, amen, he went out and he, he showed them. Amen. They saw how he responded to those who the naysayers. He saw how he responded to situations in his life. They saw how he responded to issues when they came, when they didn't have enough Amen. Food, you know, when they didn't have enough for the many, many multitudes of people that were coming just to hear from him. They saw him sit there, amen, and begin to pray over what they had. A little boy's lunch, amen, and fell five and fed five thousand. Amen. 
and more because the 5,000 was just the men. And when you have men, you have when you have women or wives, you have children, you know, but all of them were fed. But it, it just speaks of the 5,000 men. But it just lets you know that God is always a God of provision. He will provide for you. And in your mentoring, amen, he gives you, amen, a vision. But then he'll give you a provision. He'll give you a mentor. He'll give you someone to help you through, amen. I'm your mentor, amen, and, and, and we're praying it through, amen, and when we, what we see, we're going to speak as the Lord gives to us, amen, and as we have patience, so I, I don't want to just go too, too soon, because I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself, uh, see, because there's two kinds of mentees, there's two kinds, there's, there's the one kind that is what I call proactive, and then there's the other kind that I call uh, reactive, amen. So what what does it mean, Bishop? What what is proactive? Well, uh, a, a proactive person is somebody who, when you give them an assignment or you give them something from God, they jump right in and receive it, amen. But and then they just do, and you don't have to keep going back, amen. They grab it and they run with it, amen. But see, there's those also who are reactive. Amen. So watch this. If you don't give them enough details, if you don't um, show them everything, one by one, A, B, C, and D, amen, they won't do nothing. And not only that, they will complain about everything. So you don't want to be a reactive um, mentee. I want you to know I never was a reactive. I was always proactive. You know, I didn't have to be coached into everything that I need to do. Once I got the assignment, I begin to work in it. And that's what God's calling for. Amen. You're going to really move into the place he has called you to move into. When you get an assignment, when you get a word from the Lord, when your leader give you something, take it serious. Right. Take it serious and work that thing out. Because watch this. When you, when you stop and you start complaining, amen, you hinder the flow of forward momentum. Amen. You hinder the flow. Amen. You don't want to hinder the flow. So, so watch this. How do we get started? Amen. What's the first thing we need to do as being mentees uh, under a mentor? Amen. How can I be effective? Amen. As a mentee under my mentor, or how can I be an effective disciple? Amen. Under the one that's watching over me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how? Amen. Well, here's how you get started. You get started by first submitting your heart, watch this, to learning and following the instructions. Amen. Because mentoring isn't what you may think it is. It's not so much of uh, um, you, you're thinking about playing basketball, you got a basketball coach and they take you to practice every day and all that. It, it's part of that. But um, as a mentor, it goes deeper than just te teaching you a skill. It goes deeper than just teaching you how to draw or to write. It goes deeper. It could entail all of that. But it's something, it's teaching you how to live. It's teaching you how to apply the word, amen, with practical application. Practical application means how can I practically take the word that I've been taught, amen, and walk it out, amen, hallelujah. So how can I learn how to walk out loving those that don't love me? How can I learn how to, to, to walk out forgiveness when I don't want to forgive, amen, amen. So these are some of the things, your mentor, amen, is not only your mentor, but he's also your life coach. Amen. Then you talk to them. They'll give you wise counsel and they'll give you the counsel of God. Amen. So they're, they're, they're not made, maybe all the time just giving you a bunch of information, but sometimes there's critiquing. Amen. And, and mentoring and, ment and, and with the mentor and the mentee, there is a critiquing. So you may be, getting, you may be working in, <clears throat> in the ministry as a cook. Now, uh, the, the mentor may say, well, maybe you shouldn't uh, make so much because we only need this amount because we're not expecting that. Or maybe you may say, well, we may get extra. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, I believe that the Lord will give the, the mentor, amen, 
an insight that you may not have. And I don't, I'm not saying I believe that he might, he does. Amen. So the mentor listen, and then you guys can sit down and he can talk and, and critique a situation. Were you sitting there teaching her how to cook or teaching him how to cook or teaching him how to prepare something? No. Amen. But as it comes up, Amen. As you are proactive, now the mentor has something to, to look at and see because the leader, amen, has something from God. He has the vision, amen, and he gives you a part of that vision so he knows or she knows how she wants that place or that thing brought to pass, amen. So as we begin to engage with the mentor, amen, we're able to come up and we're able to facilitate the vision for that particular area, no matter what that area may be. Amen. See, because most leaders will give you an assignment that they know, and hear what I'm saying, that they know by the spirit, you already have the measure to bring it to pass through the use of an inherent God-given ability. And I want you to know that leaders know a leader that love you and they, they're called by you, they pray for you, they know your, your gifting, they know your your abilities, they know the limitations, they know the, 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 the part or the measure that you have. You can have as much measure as you want, but the leader understands, a good leader, amen, that's walking with you and, and you are submitted to and with your heart, amen, they know, amen, what's on the inside of you because God tells them. Yes. So, uh, um, so therefore, it, it's important that you critique and and with and uh, further give further instructions. Amen. So I, I give you an example. As a a youth pastor, I had uh, I believe what it was, honey, about eighty youth. We had about eighty, almost a hundred at one time. It went down to eighty youth at one time, and and I had to. We had to together. We had to organize the classes. We had to. Uh, um, Get teachers, put teachers, the right teacher with the right people, amen. By the Spirit, we had to be discerning how to get the right teachers for the classes. We had to break down the age range. We had to prepare a lesson plan, amen. We had to prepare SOPs. Or what's, what are SOPs? They are standard operating procedures. And, and, and watch this. That was with no assistance from the leader, amen. And, but we became highly successful. Why? Because we took what was given to us serious and began to work it out. Because I'm going to tell you why that's important. What would happen if the pastor had to turn around? You got 80, you, he already give you, he's giving you the youth, he's giving you what you need to do. What if he had to turn around, take time, show you how to get the class together, show you how to get the right teacher. Oh, this one will go and this one will will not. This one be good. This one won't be good. And you and, and all you did was just follow just instructions, but you never stepped out of your comfort zone to do anything for yourself. And the leader has to prepare the lesson plan. The leader has to prepare the SOPs. The leader has to um, break down, you know, get the breakdown of the, the different class by age group. If he had to do that, what do he need you for? You know, what did, we, what did he need me for if he gave me to be the youth pastor, amen, and then when he gave it to me, then he had to critique every little thing that I did. What did he need me for? But he saw in me an ability, a God-given ability that I did not even know was there, amen. He saw a God-given grace, and that's why it's important to mentor and a mentee and say, well, I'm not being mentored. You are. If you've been given an assignment, you've been mentored, amen. So... Uh, as he gave that to me, the, the vision started opening up. Had he not given it to me, I would not have known that it was there. Yes. Amen. So it's very important with the mentor and the mentee that we understand uh, part of your, your processing or part of your um, discipleship is to will come through an assignment. Amen. As you get assignments, you'll grow. As a pastor, I never thought I would be a pastor. I, less than all, I didn't think I would be a bishop. Amen. Me? 
Amen. Why me, Lord? You know, all the people that's out there that's doing things that's greater than me, got more money, got more everything. Amen. But God said, no, I called you. Amen. And I want you to know that God will call you to. And then when the leader, amen, gives you the assignment and it comes from God anyway. Amen. And once he gives you the assignment, just say yes. Just say yes. And be faithful, amen? And as you're faithful, and then you grow into, you grow into that place that God is calling you to grow into. It's almost like my dad, when he was uh, 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 um, uh, alive, amen, uh, I used to go into the closet and put his coat on, amen? Here's his suit coats, and because I, I want to be like my dad, amen? So I went on and put his suit coat on, went and got his gun, put that on, because my dad carried a gun, amen? Uh, he wasn't saved for a long time. I was married and out the house when he got saved. But I, I went and got my gun, amen, got his gun, put my suit coat on, put his hat, tilted to the side, walking down the hallway, terrorizing all my brothers and sisters, amen. I was the oldest, so they couldn't do nothing but run and be afraid, amen. And I was just a stupid idiot, amen, to do that. But I did, and, and but I couldn't, I, it didn't fit me. It hung off of me. You know, the hat was was wobbling off my head. I looked at like one of those um bottle heads, amen. And my, my hat was, what, honey? Bobbling. Bottle heads. <laughs> but that's how I looked. The hat was bobbling. You know, my, my, my clothes was hanging off because it was my dad's. I mean, I couldn't wear it. But one thing I found out, as maturity came, I began to get older and began to grow. After a while, I could wear my dad's clothes, amen. And that's the same way with mentoring and mentorship. Sometimes you may be given an assignment that you may not feel that you're big enough or, or, or wise enough or have the facilities, amen, to, uh, uh, to do. But as you move by faith, amen, and you begin to take that, amen, to, and then you pray about it, and then you trust the God that's in the leader that he gave you that, that assignment and say, well, I, this is my assignment and begin to take it serious. You'd be surprised at what God will do. I saw some great and powerful things, even after years of the, some of the students that I had in our, in, in that time, they were all little at the time. Now they come up now, hug you, say, Hey, huh? they know, I don't even remember who they are. <laughs> you talking about 30, they're 40 and 40 years old and 30 and 40 years old right now. And, and some of them older than 40, amen. And, and, and they embrace you and hug you. And I'm like, whoa, okay, well, I don't know who you are. Amen, you know me. They say, you know I know who you are. I say, well, amen, God bless you. <laughs> but we, these be some big, big, big homegrowns, amen. Hallelujah. But um, I thank God for giving us the opportunity to do that. In fact, as being a mentor, being a leader, being a youth pastor, I had gotten to the point where that's what I wanted to do. Amen. I say I'm youth pastor now, and I embraced it and began to walk it and live it. And when I went with our children, amen, I took pride. Amen. When we went to the zoo and we went here, we had movie night and we had pizza night and we had this and, and the different thing, cookouts. We had plays. We had all kind of things that we did. I just took it so personal. So one day... The leader said, okay, you did good with that. So now I want you to be my youth, pa my, my assistant pastor. I'm like, no way. Amen. And he, no. and he took the youth from me. Amen. I'm, I was upset. I had, a, I had a problem. I told my wife, I said, what is he doing? Don't he know this who I am? I'm a youth pastor. Amen. And I'm good at it. Amen. And I was, I was just so, I, was, I mean, I was just shaken by that. Amen. Because I, I, I just, I, I had embraced it. I had bought into the ideal of who I was. I was walking in it and I just felt that was my part. That was my portion. Amen. I just embraced it to that place that nothing else that I was interested in, but the youth. Amen. And I tell you, it was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. And I told Apostle, I said, Apostle, why would you, why did you do that? I mean, I was happy doing what he said, because God said he has greater things for you. Now, ain't nothing greater. I said to myself, hey, what are you talking about? Ain't nothing greater than what I'm doing right now. But he had greater things. Amen. He has greater things. And, and don't take 
those the things that people may think are small or minimum. Amen. So, oh, I'm only um, doing this. I'm not, I'm not going to say any um, positions because I don't want anybody to think of any position as being small. But there could be things that people may look at as small, but it's not small to to God. It is not that small to the leader, and it's not definitely not small to God. If He gives you an assignment, if your leader gives you an assignment, I don't care if it's picking up the hangers on the floor and hanging them back up, amen, or taking coats and put, or taking the umbrella, holding up while ladies, while the ladies are going to their cars. If he give you an assignment, take it serious, amen. If he give me an assignment of taking, getting the umbrella, holding it up, I'm going to go and buy me some, I'm going to buy me about 10 umbrellas. Amen. Cause I had that at one time. Amen. amen. I will, I will take the ladies to the, to the car. Amen. I had an umbrella. I had a couple more people. I, I got them with me. I said, come on, y'all. We need to get these ladies out. And we don't want them to get wet. You know, we don't want their weave to fall off, you know, anything <laughs> like that. So we, we didn't want them to be ashamed. We want them to be ashamed or bring them down. So I had the men. They were ready. Amen. They got their umbrellas and they went out. I wasn't asked to do it. But I saw the need. And that, and that's with, with what happens when you're mentored. Amen. You come to a point that now... You move independently without even having to have anyone to give you anything because you see, you get the passion, you get the heart of the leader, and you know it's important, and because you know it's important to the leader, it becomes important to you and with the right spirit. Amen. I need to stop and slow down because you have to have the right spirit because, see, you can want to do something, but if you do it and you don't do it in the right spirit, you might as well don't even do it. So, I, so the best way to look at it is like this. If, if this is the way the leader would do it, then that's the way I should do it. Amen. So I'm doing it as unto him. Je that's what Jesus says. What the things that I do, amen, hallelujah, say you'll do the same thing or, and even greater things, amen. you know, but do it as I do it. Do it as I have said, as I have instructed. So if the leader's not going to curse anyone out, then I don't need to be cursing them out. If the leader won't walk in, walk in unforgiveness with the saints, then I, you know, I don't, I don't need to be walking in unforgiveness with the saints. Amen. If the leader, amen, is loving towards those who are not, that people may not like, amen, then I need to be loving towards that person. But I want you to know it's not an easy thing. And see, just because you are a mentee and a mentor, it doesn't mean that you're really picking up the spirit of the leader. Because if you don't have the right spirit, amen, there's a good indication that you may not pick up you may not catch that speed that leader spirit i'll give you a good example of that uh with um elisha had a servant called gehazi amen you don't hear much about gehazi but uh, when he had this servant um he was his he was elijah's elisha's um servant and the lady the widow woman's um son had died amen and he he told um gehazi he said gehazi Take my uh, um, my 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 uh, rod that he had. I think it was a rod, and he said, "Take it, Amen, and lay it upon him and speak, and he should wait, come back to life, Amen." But when Gehazi went, Amen, and did it, I don't know how he did it or what he did, but I want you to know nothing happened. And the reason why nothing happened because he didn't have the true heart of the leader. See, you can't fake it. See, when, when you have the true heart of the leader, you'll walk in that same anointing. Did you know that? The anointing that the leader walks in, you can walk in that anointing. You can speak and decree, declare, amen, things, amen, as unto God, amen, as the leader has declared and decreed them. Maybe not at the same level, amen, but you'll be able to do it. Why? Because you will have the heart of the leader. You'll preach like them. You'll, you'll walk like them. You'll look like them. Amen. Why? Because there's a, a spirit. There's a connection in the spirit. Amen. Sometimes even on Sunday mornings, I begin to minister. Amen. I feel my leader's presence and I hear his voice coming out of my mouth. Even some mannerisms. Amen. Why? Because I caught, I stayed along. I stayed with him long enough that I caught his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we begin to submit our hearts, we must submit our hearts, amen. We'll be able to move in the place of discipleship and, and mentoring that we can take the baton to the next level.
Now, um, if at Freedom Empowerment Ministry Center, God forbid if anything would have happened to me, I want to know that I live in a way and I talk with a passion that something is being caught that if I move off this plane, amen, that someone would be able to pick up the baton and take it forth. And I'm not saying my wife. It don't have to be my wife. Because we say, oh, well, she can do it. No, someone should be able, that's anointed of God, to take the baton. And that's why it's so important, amen, to submit our hearts. Because there's something taking place, amen, between the mentor and the mentee. And that's the reason why we have to keep ourselves in a place that's faultless, amen, because whatever is on you, it can come off. And I, and I pray that through my years of, in ministry and my years of life, that nothing that was negative in my life would ever pass to anyone that I'm mentoring, amen. So that, that's my prayer, amen. I'm always, that's, that's my, my, my goal, that's my passion, amen. And you can't take back things that's happening in your life. I mean, we, there are a lot of things that happen, amen, that could take place in life. But nothing that's negative won't pass. I decree that, that nothing negative from my past, amen, will be passed on to you. Amen. amen. Praise amen. God. And because I trust God by faith, I know it hasn't. And I know it won't be, amen. So, but we walk in a way that is integral. Praise God. So, Amen. What does it mean to be discipled or mentored? Amen. There's a few things that we need to, to look at. The first thing is, um, as a disciple to be mentored, you're learning through demonstration. I say that again. You're learning through, because people say, well, I don't remember getting mentored. Yeah, you've been mentored. Amen. You, you just don't understand yet. Amen. But you learn through demonstration. Watch this. You're watching, and you're spending time with your mentor, whether it's talking or um, just conversating or maybe go take your mentor to lunch. You know, you know, just take some time and spend time. Listen to them, and, and, and don't sit there the whole time talking about people or stuff. Because, see, uh, I believe this about that. I believe that small minds... Talk about other people. Um, wise minds talk about events. But great minds talk about ideas. They discuss ideas. So when you're with your mentor, instead of talking about what this person did over here and that person did over there, talk about some ideals. What kind of ideals do you have for ministry? What kind of ideals do you have, amen, to make this 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 better or to improve on uh, what's going on? We may be doing something this way, but if we did it that way, we can improve, you know, uh, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent, amen. And we, we can we can benchmark that and you begin to move forward. That's what wise people do. That's what great minds do. That's what um, rich people, because see, poor people think for right now, for what they have in in their pocket or what they have on the cabinet, so what kind of car they're driving right now. But you know what rich people, wise people, great people, they think, they think generationally. So when we're talking mentoring and, and mentorship, we're talking about the future. We're not just talking about what's going on right now. But we're talking about what's going to happen in the future. I'm thinking past me when I'm when I'm off the scene. That's where I'm at right now. I'm thinking about how am I helping to assist those that are around me that they can do what I do like I do it and watch this to do it even better than I do. Amen. We're going to be teaching on some things in our, our leadership training class. Amen. And, and there, there's we, we got some great things that I have lined up for you. Amen. Why? Because we're preparing for the future. Amen. Preparing you for the future. And listen, it don't have anything to do with positions and, and stuff like that. Now see, we, we let positions just, just cause us to lose our mind. 
I mean, we get so caught up on calling me minister, calling me elder, calling me evangelist, calling me bishop, calling me pastor. Listen, listen, like I said a few weeks ago, you're a child of God. Amen. We're all child, children of God. And that's the greatest calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we deacon. I, how come I'm not a deacon? How come I'm not a minister? Listen, get off. Get off of that. And get over that. Amen. And let's see the work. Because it's all about the work. It's all about the work. We have we have a lot of work. Amen. We have people we're praying for that just came into the kingdom. Amen. When the last time you call them, call them, check on them, pray for them. Because I, I, I just know that every time we say we're praying, we're really not praying like we say we are. I wasn't even. I will say, I, I'm praying for you, you know. But now, when I think about a person, I pray right then. I mean, why? Because sometimes you start getting busy and then you forget. Amen. So just pray right then. And then, then you, you know that you've said and you've kept your word. Amen. And when I keep my word, your word has to mean something. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Because your word is part of the character development. Amen. I remember I had said to one of the leaders that we're going to, you know, I'm wearing a clergy. We're going to be going somewhere and um, and you can wear yours. Amen. So I came to church and I put on a certain tie. You know, I forgot. They came. They had the clergy on. They just looked and said, oh, I thought they was wearing clergy. And then went on about their work. And, man, that thing just just cut my heart. I said, man, I gave them my word. I'm, I'm a pastor. I mean, I'm the chief servant. And I can't keep my word. I got in my car, took off. During the, I was going way over the speed limit, amen. I had about a half hour, amen, to get back because I had to preach. I went home, grabbed my clergy, amen, put my clergy on. I was buttoning my shirt, going in, getting in the car, amen, got in the car, shot back. And by the time it, they were about getting started for me to come in, amen, I had my clergy on. And they looked and they smiled. They said, Wow, <laughs> you kept your word. Yeah, I got to keep my word. Amen. See, we're, we're, we're being watched. That's part of the process. Amen. Watching and spending time with your mentor. Watching, spending time. Learn how to follow instructions. But I have to follow instructions too. Amen. And learning how to see an assignment all the way through. We're almost running out of time. Um, learning how to take ownership of that assignment. The leader sees that the person is good with money. Amen. So I, I, I'll make you a trustee. So if I make you a trustee, you know, I, I'm, I need a trustee. I don't have time to sit down and go through all the particulars. I'll give you a few things. We'll sit down. I'll give you basically what I'm looking for. Amen. But after that, you got you to gotta seek it out. You know, as a trustee, I went to seminars, amen. I went to classes. I looked this up stuff on the internet because I want to be a good trustee, amen. So in anything that you do, if you want to take it serious as a mentee, go go to go to second mile. Come out of your comfort zone, amen. Come on, y'all know last year, amen. I took the whole whole team. We went to, you know, we went out of town, amen. Went all the way. We got on a plane, you know, we didn't stay in the hotels. I mean, went to seminars to learn how to do, amen, and, 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 and we invested. You didn't have to pay anything. I invested in you. I sold into your lives, amen, and that's what the mentor does. He sows or she sows into your life for your development. I didn't just do that just because we want to have a vacation. No, I was, I meant something. It meant something to me that you were exposed to something that you hadn't been exposed to before. Amen. So you take it, amen, what you've learned. Take it to the next level. Don't stop backing up. Um, there's a leader um, uh, in, in Matthew's, um, as an example, Matthew's 25. It talked about this man who had a vineyard, right, or had a vineyard. Is, it was his business, or let's, let's say it was his church. So it was all of those. It was his vineyard. It was his business. It was his church. And he, was, and he entrusted his property to a servant, he had to leave and go, go, amen. So as he went, he entrusted his property to his servants. And to, and so he assigned them, watch this, whoo, this is good. He assigned them according to their what? Their abilities. He gave them assignments 
according to their abilities. He gave one five talents or five and say he gave, let's let's do it with something that you're relevant with. He gave one five hundred dollars. He gave one two hundred dollars, and he gave one a hundred dollars. What based on their abilities? Who knows the ability? The leader did. He knew that the one with the one hundred dollars, he didn't have enough faith that the one with the five hundred had, because he's watched his life. He knows all about it, and see, he was being mentored. You know, so he he went on and he gave each one of them that part, the five hundred, the two hundred, and one hundred. And and guess what happened? The mentee who had the five hundred, he doubled his money. He had a thousand when when he came back. I don't know what amount of time it had to be a little bit of time. Them to take five hundred, make a thousand out of it. Amen. That that's awesome. Amen. And then the second one also doubled his money. He had two. He came back with four. Amen. But then the one that only had one hundred, what did he do? He went and hid it. He did nothing with it. He did nothing with the assignment. He did nothing with the charge that was given to him. He just sat back and complained and said, oh, you know, I know that you, you, you sow what you shouldn't reap, you know, and just made excuses. Don't find, don't, don't allow yourself to be in a place where we're making excuses for doing, amen, what God has given us to do. That's Matthew 24, Matthew 24, amen, on the 14th verse, amen, and just look at what, amen, took place there. And so what he did, he took the one from him that was buried, that he did nothing with, and gave that talent to um, the one that had the five. Amen. Hallelujah. So well, God is looking at you. Amen. He's looking at us. And he's, he's given us assignments based on what? Our abilities. Sometimes we don't want that assignment. We want another assignment. You know, we, we want, we've been given assignment as a deacon, but we really want a minister. But you're not ready for the minister yet. God said it's time for you to be a deacon first. Amen. But because we didn't want to be the minister, the deacon, now we're going to sit out and do nothing. That's And see what I said before? That's the wrong spirit. And you'll never grow, amen, to get the spirit leader with that kind of spirit. Amen. So we must learn to be patient. We must learn to go through disappointment. Jesus had to do it. Jesus was so patient with his disciples. One day he had been teaching them and walking all day, and then he ran into a man, and Jesus started teaching them. He said, listen, uh, I am the way, in John. He said, I'm the truth, and I'm the light. Amen. And, and then they turned around and said, well, uh-uh, sh- uh, uh, show, us, show us the Father. Amen. He said, I just told you, I'm the way. <laughs> I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And the Father and I is one. Amen? Hallelujah. He had to be disappointed. He, he, you know, then this one man, they turn around right behind that. This centurion comes, and he said, um, I, I'm, he's sick. You know, my, my, my son, my servant is sick and all of that, and they made about to die. And, and, and you know, and Jesus said, because he builds temples and stuff like that. He helped the Jews. He helped the people. God, so Jesus said, well, let me go ahead and, and heal his, his servant. Come on, let's go. And he said, no. He said, don't come. He said, stop. He stopped Jesus in his track. He said, no, I'm a man under authority. I tell this one to go and that one to come, this one to go, and that one to, to raise up, that one to do. You know, so he said, and, and I'm not worthy that you come into my house. But he said, Jesus, just speak the word. And I know that your word will get on the zephyrs of the wind and then fly to where my servant is. And I know he's going to be healed by you just speaking the word. Man, Jesus looked at his disciple. Whoa, did you hear what he said? (laughs) All of y'all been with me all this time and ain't none of y'all got the message yet. He had to go through patience. Jesus had to learn through disappointed disappointments. God, he said that um, Jesus learned obedience through the things that he had to suffer. He had to learn through hard times. Amen. And I said last week, submission before ambition. Submission before ambition. We have to submit 
ourselves, amen, so that we can understand what it means to be. You got to be patient and wait. Patient and go through disappointment sometimes. Be patient when you want something to happen and it didn't happen yet and you think you're being looked over. You're not being looked over. You're being processed. It took me 23 years of submission before God called me out. Come on, don't tell me nothing that we can't submit. Yes, you can. And then your submission, you don't even look for. See, when promotion comes, it doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. You know when promotion comes? Promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. So, and he can give you promotion at any time. That's nothing to God. Amen. We worry about money and things. Listen, God can take you from having nothing at all and turn you into the, the richest person in the world overnight. He can do that. Yeah. You know why? Because it's no big deal to God. What You know what's a big deal? You're submitting yourselves to him. You're submitting and connecting yourself with your leader. Because, see, the, the one thing that, that, that um, you don't understand that Satan knows is that this, when you have someone connected to a strong leader, it can change destinies. It can change your total trajectory in your life when you're connected to a strong leader, speaking into your life, praying for you. So what he does, he don't want you to be connected to a leader. He'll show you the, 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 the imperfections. We all have imperfections. He has shown you everything to complain about. And then while you're complaining in your, your, your heart, amen, you're losing, amen, you're, you're seeping out the anointing and the grace, amen. Hallelujah. I used to mop a floor. It was a gymnasium at one of the churches I was at, and, and every all the guys, they took off and went home. I had to do it by myself. I didn't complain. I got my mop bucket, and I just was, went pushing the mop, and I would be in the church by myself, and I didn't even know. One day, I was, I was in there mopping, singing, and I looked up, and my pastor was standing over me, and he looked at me. He pointed. He said, as much as you have, every one of those strokes is an anointing coming from God. I say, glory to God. Was I looking for that? No. Was I expecting that? No. Did I think that would even happen? Was I even thinking about anything like that? No, I wasn't. Amen. I was just mopping the floor. And as we submit ourselves in a, through a place of love, amen, like Jesus did, he submitted himself even unto death. Think about that. We're out of time, so I'm going to have to cut this off. I didn't even go through the um, <laughs> the qualities of a mentor. So if, yes, what did Pastor Dwayne say? Wow, is what? Lost. Flossed? <laughs> Woo! L -L all right, all right, Pastor Dwayne in New York, Brooklyn, New York, my Brooklyn warrior. Amen. He said, You can do all those, but if your word ain't nothing, then you ain't nothing. Mm, that's floss. That's what that means. If your word, they, that's what the, 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 old, the uh, older people used to teach us that if your word ain't nothing, you ain't nothing. Amen. And I, I, I want to be a man of my word. Amen. I try to. Sometimes we forget, sometimes we miss, but in my heart, it's in my heart to be a man of my word. Amen. So uh, we, we, we're going to close out now because we're past our time. Thank you for um, joining us on um, tonight. We want to um, pray. Amen. We not don't have time to go through any of the questions. Maybe I'll finish up next week or maybe um, we'll go to the next lesson. I don't know. I'm going to pray about it. And see what I'm feeling. Um, if you guys think that this is good and we should go on for next week, why don't you give me a couple hearts or something? Honey, let me see if you see any hearts. Amen. If I don't see any thumbs up or hearts, then I'll just go to the next lesson. Amen. But if you're learning something from this, um, as I, I'm definitely not finished with this lesson, uh, I want to go ahead and, and go to the next lesson. But Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'll finish up um, next week.
thank you. I had to ask your permission because I, I said I would do two sessions, and uh, we've done two, and I'm still not finished. So I like to be a man of my word. So God bless you. So if anyone doesn't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of their sins, um, I, I want to um, introduce him to you today. Amen. It says, though our sins, it said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first thing we have to do when we come to the Lord is we must repent of our sins. Amen. The sin is what separates us from God. Amen. And once we repent, amen, we ask, ask the Lord to come into our heart. But we've got to first believe. Amen. We believe that Jesus died on the cross and he was buried and he rose on the third day. Amen. For you and for me with all power in his hand. If you believe that, amen, and you receive it in your heart, you can ask the Lord to come into your heart. And he said, I'll come in. After we repent and we believe and we confess it, you have to confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. It says, then thou shalt be saved. So if you have fulfilled all of those things, you believe, amen, you confess it with your mouth, believe it in your heart, you, you repent it, then you open for um, uh, being Christians, then you open to be a child of God, should I say, amen. So and if you've done that, amen, it's, it's real simple, just ask the Lord, say, Lord, come into my heart. I'm sorry, I messed up, I've been jacked up, I've been towed up from the floor, up. but Lord God, I believe that Jesus died for me and he rose from the dead. And Lord God, you said, if I confess that with my mouth and I really believe it in my heart, you said, I'll be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. And then you need to be baptized. Amen. In water. Amen. You're baptizing, being baptized is you, you're putting a ring, you're getting married. Amen. Hallelujah. You, can, you can't have a, a common law marriage with God. Amen. You got to get baptized. Amen. And that puts the ring on the finger. Amen. That seals the deal. Amen. So you be baptized, and then there's a thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you're baptized, amen, you ask for the Holy Spirit, amen, he said, I'll fill you. Some people are filled as they are baptized with the Holy Spirit, amen. So if that's you today, amen, inbox us, let us know, amen. I would love to talk to you. I would love you to come, amen, and worship with us. I would love to pray with you personally. Lay my hands on you. I'm not afraid, amen, of the big bad wolf, amen, because I got a big God with me, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he's standing with me, and I thank God for that, so I'm not afraid. So um, if you've done that, God bless you. We're going to we, we'll be here next week, amen, at the same time, same station, amen. And um, if you want to, you can come to church, amen, 1505 East 260th Street. It's right there on the um, uh, icon that's going across. What do you call that, honey? Yeah. That's going across at the bottom of the screen. Like the marquee. Yeah, the marquee that's going across at the bottom. It's called something else. I just can't think of it right now. Yeah. But amen. But but just call us, oh man. You know, inbox us, amen. You said um, Sister Dina was on it. Sister Dina was on. Amen. God bless you, Sister Dina. I'm gonna be calling you. I'm so glad you're home from the hospital. I had a great time talking to you there, amen. God bless you. I love you, amen. I'm looking forward to seeing you, amen, soon. So, um, let's let's just go ahead and, and move on forward. God bless you, amen. May the peace of God, that the peace of God rest and rule with you now and forever and now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ through the evolution the evolution amen of the the spirit of God let it keep you let it bless you amen in all good things working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight in Jesus name we pray that God will move you that he will change you that he will change your whole trajectory in life, amen, and strengthen you. I pray that you have a great sleep tonight. I pray that he will bind every spirit of, of unrest, anything that's been ailing you, amen. We, we come against it now that you have a, a restful sleep in Jesus' name. I love you all, amen. May God bless you and may heaven keep you and may God smile upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you on next week.